All right. We are here. And our guest today is Anna, and I'm not even going to try, Mark. You've got to. Pris Blizzki. Pris Blizzki. Pris Blizzki. She went from a last name of Step to Pris Blizzki. God bless That's her. love. That is love. <laughs> and uh, she was really, really wonderful. Very um, a woman who shares very openly about the challenges in her life. And what I love is she, she, like she before the pandemic, she wasn't even thinking, am I glad to be alive or not? And suddenly it hit her when everything came to a stop. Like, oh, am I glad to be alive? And then she was someone who wants to do something about that answer if it's not a positive answer. Well, we normally don't do this, but if you are somewhat destabilized in your mental health, you may want to skip this program because it's there's some very vulnerable things that we talk about. You know, we mentioned, you know, suicidal thoughts and we mentioned being really up against it mentally. But overall, even if you do feel that way, it might be worth the risk because she's so expressive and she's broken through and shown us all the way forward into being better humans. And, you know, listening to Anna tell the story about what she's doing and just to be in her presence is so life affirming and so inspiring. And it's easy for us to say that kind of thing every week because we're lucky to have these great guests, yeah. but it's really true with this yeah. guest. So please stick around if you're not mentally ill. And, <laughs> and even if you are, because I am and I did it. Um, subscribe, leave some comments. Um, Support Blast and Compton Cowboys. Drink Adrenochrome Cola. And thanks for coming along on another ride. Two outlaws on the lamb, taking the back roads through America. You can't drink enough coffee for this show. And now it's time for Monday Madness with the Moped Outlaws, Greg and Mark. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Moped Outlaws. Today, we are so excited to have our guest, oh, Anna wait, Prissy wait. Blitzky. <laughs> wait, wait, let's hear it again because I've been waiting for this moment. Well, why didn't you just shut up and let me do it? Because I'm stupid. <laughs> All right. Welcome to another episode of the Moped Outlaws. We are so stoked today to have our guest, Anna Prizzy Bliski, <laughs> who has the most difficult name to pronounce it's we've true. yet done. Yes. And I think I got it right. Tell me how I did, Anna. Like very close. Like you can just mesh it all together. So it's just Prizbilski. You got it. just cough it out. <laughs> Got it. It's the Dagwood sandwich of difficult names. <laughs> it's it's uh it's my married name. My maiden name is Step. <laughs> step. Yeah. S C E P. S C E P. <laughs> you went from Step to this. Yeah, ten letters, one vowel. Wow, you really love this person. <laughs> I do actually. It's been thirteen years, and I'm still pretty, pretty into him. So awesome! Congratulations. That's for the best. <laughs> Got it. Good. Well. Lately, uh, AK, Anna, has been on tour. She did three days in Philly, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th of September, and she did a TEDx talk, mm -hmm. and you recently let go of your duties to the, the, the work-a-day world and have fully leaned into your creative capacity. How's it feel? Yeah, 10 days officially as a content creator. Uh, I've never been more tired in my whole life. I thought there was something wrong with me today because I was like, I can hardly keep my eyes open. And then I was like, Anna, in the last four weeks, you went to Chicago to cover the DNC as press. You worked your last week of work and put on a full festival, camped 2,000 people like and then got in the car, drove to the East Coast, did four shows in three days, got in the car, drove home, went to the TED welcome party, then went to did my TED talk. And I was like, you know what? That makes sense, actually. I am right? tired. <laughs> this is why comedians take drugs. I know. I always am like, I'm like, I I always wonder how do people do this? And I'm like, I know how they do it. And I can't do Espresso it. Espresso machines. 
<laughs> uh, you yeah. drink coffee, Anna? I have ADHD, so caffeine does nothing for me. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh. Do you, um, do you, I mean, take... I drink it, but it, I can drink a full energy drink and take a nap, and I frequently do. <laughs> well, do you think ADHD helped you to ping pong around the continent? Probably. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a disability and a superpower in its different ways. Well, here's for the illusion of neur neuro uh, normalcy. Yes. We're all a little bit of neurodivergent, I think. My so. number one, yeah, my favorite thing about myself is my own delusion. So that's what fuels my fire. <laughs> I was just saying, part of what really attracted Mark and I to having you as a guest on this ride is the humor in your social media. Like, and your transparency. I think the one that sold us was the one where you were breaking down and you were like, I can't do this. I'm done, but I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I never really considered giving up on anything was an option and even leaving my job. So many people reminded me, they're like, when you end something, it's not the end, it's the beginning of the next thing. So mm -hmm. it's been, it's been good. No, and I, I, I don't know if it's just from sharing constantly and sharing every day and never like sugarcoating anything. And I've just gotten like so comfortable with it. And I, I did an interview recently and, and at some point her mouth was on the jaw and she, she said, your vulnerability is arresting. And I was like, oh no, should I say less? <laughs> Not on this show. <laughs> Turn the vulnerability all the way up. Yeah. Like, watch out. We might do meet you there. Yeah, I'm such an open book, so I'm I'm always like love to do interviews and. Well, speaking of books, you yeah, wrote a book. Keep it up, cutie. I did. How long it, ago did you do that? Uh, it came out February of 2024, but right. it was done about a year before that, and that was like this whole learning process too of just how slow the publishing industry is. Because I had seen the book a year before it came out. And I was like, well, why can't we just put it out? <laughs> yeah. yeah what, why doesn't it exist yet? No, but um, that's another thing. I, I'm living this entire life where I don't think that I'm talented enough to do any of it. But I just am doing it all anyway. Whatever that is. Delusion. Which, How which gives your people per permission yeah. to, to be who they are. And so, yeah, that's exactly the thing to be doing. We all need that. Yeah. And yeah, Greg, what was your question? How does your husband support you in all these endeavors? Well, he hasn't left me. So that's, that's, that's an A plus. That's not quite support. Like that's a pretty low bar. <laughs> I just mean, I, not I, anymore, unfortunately. I just mean I flipped our life upside down, really. And our plan, like since the day we met, was always that he would be, he would stay home and do whatever he wanted. And I would work because I liked working so much. This is a past life. And I was such a workaholic and I was so content with that, but I was also hiding from my whole life. Spoiler alert. And um, no, it's just, he's taken it all in stride for me, which has been, you know, I think <laughs> that's all I can ask. And also luckily our communication has always been so good and I say like the second this is done, it's done. You know, like if you don't want to be on tour with me or you don't want to, you know, be a part of, or you don't want to sell my merch for me uh, <laughs> when it's done, it's done. And I get somebody else to do it, but he's just been there every step of the way. He's at every show. He's at every book party launch, all of it. And, Are and you paying him a salary while. yet? No, <laughs> no, I don't have any money. So <laughs> it would be complicated. Dang. Got it. So this is interesting because you're a content creator. Mm -hmm. You have 700,000 followers on TikTok, mm -hmm. half a million followers on Instagram. Yeah. And we have this culture that thinks that if you're at that level, then there must be like Lamborghinis and mm -hmm. tour in your life. But that's not the reality of it, is it? I think it can be the reality. I think for the last four years, I've been doing double duty because I'm was making content full time and working full time. So I wasn't pursuing opportunities to make very much money online. Um, and now, you know, it's kind of like I'm thrusting myself into that world and kind of forcing it. Um, 
it's definitely been up and down. Like there was a year I made a hundred thousand dollars on the side online. And then this year I've made nothing, which is like, Oh God. Wow. <laughs> so that, it's is that because TikTok changed the way that they pay creators or, or how what's everybody the changed the way they paid creators. Yeah. So TikTok used to pay for uh 40 cents or four, Forty dollars per million views wow. on anything, and it's not that much, but it's something. It was a couple hundred dollars a month, uh, and then Instagram also used to pay uh, twelve hundred dollars a month just to post. And those are both gone, um, so that made a huge difference. Uh, and it's just kind of up and down, and then it just depends, like if you get a brand deal or not. It it's totally random, it seems, um, and the amount they pay you is varies from, you know, five figures to $50. Like, I don't know how I always, <laughs> people are like, what's your advice? And I'm like, just know that it's not going to be consistent, whatever it is. It's unless you set it up yourself, which is what I'm doing going forward, not to jump so around. Gonna, are you going to start an only fans for you and just in your bathrobe and laying <laughs> I'm starting a morning show October 1st on Patreon. So that'll be Monday through Friday, five minutes every day. And um, that's behind a paywall. So that is like my initial plan for income, just so that I don't have to rely on other brands or anything. I'm just relying on me for that. Um, I I don't even trust myself that much, but I trust myself more than. <laughs> so the link to that will be in the show notes. For those of you who are interested mm -hmm. in finding out yeah. about that, that yes. in show notes for sure. I'm interested to find out about it as well. <laughs> Is there going to be a live stream or pre-recorded? No, it's going to be pre-recorded. Um, but yeah, I have 11 days to figure that out. So that's in enough. Five, in five minutes? It's going to be five one-minute topics. So that oh. will be, and then it's just every morning. Yeah. Wow. Got it. Well, three of them are covered breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then yeah. snacks makes it perfect. So you only really need one cock. Yeah, one I'll just cock tell everybody about what I'm gonna eat. That will I'll lose the, the, the fan base pretty quickly. <laughs> it wasn't All a right. very good show. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth my five bucks. <laughs> Do you get feedback from viewers on your content? Uh yes. I like don't... that was good yesterday, or oh, you seem to be off. Or... I'm really, really lucky, and I don't know if it's just the content or that I've just created a safe space for myself or what. I get pretty nice comments. The mean comments are generally about my looks, not about my work. <laughs> and we'll fuck them. Yeah, I know. I it's like, well, okay, you couldn't come up with anything else, and I feel that way too. Like if. If I really hated somebody, I don't. But if I did, like the last thing I would comment on is what they looked like. I'd right. come up with a much better reason, a much more unique reason. A much right. more painful way to stab them in yeah. the psychic. You're like, it's just the it's just the lowest hanging fruit. Like, okay, and I right, so with your title, not quite a self help book. Yeah. Well, I'm What's not qualified. Your... I, so that's I don't have any qualifications course. to write a self help book. So you just put not quite. That's like the that's like the allegedly. <laughs> but doesn't your own experience qualify you? I think so, but I'm not a professional, and I don't want anybody to. I don't want it to be on on my hands. You know, uh, all I can lawyers. tell you is what I know and what I've learned, and you can do with that what you want. All right. So what did you learn from this past four weeks of jumping all around? That well, <laughs> this past four weeks, I learned that I need to budget my time better. No, but <laughs> in the last four years, uh, I just I came from a household and a life in the keep it to yourself, the never talk about anything. Nobody has any feelings. Mental health is taboo lifestyle. And uh I did everything for other people. I lived the life I thought I should live. And I got the degree and I got the job and I got the house and I got the car. And I wasn't any happier. I, and so it was kind of that like demystifying the whole thing and breaking down the fairy tale and starting over from square one and saying, I don't like my life and I want to do something different with it. Um, and all I did was go online and talk about my life. So you're like, yeah, <laughs> no, I am having the time of my life. I really am. I wouldn't 
I'm not the kind of person who would walk away from stability if I didn't know this was something I needed to do. And it was last March. I did seven shows in on the West Coast. And we were in the car for 96 hours. And we drove, you know, from Detroit to Denver to uh, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle. And uh, on our way home, I was just like, I'll never be satisfied living the life I lived before this. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I said, this is it. And then it still took me a few months to like gather the courage to tell the, my coworkers that. But I was like, was there I a watershed gonna... moment that where you shifted, where you became really, really aware that it was time to break the family pattern and start being more overtly yourself and express fully self-expressed? Yeah, uh, like it was in the pandemic. So obviously when the pandemic started, um, I'm an event planner, was an event planner. Uh, and so I had no job. And like I had mentioned, my job was my entire identity. So it was kind of this first time I'd ever been alone with myself for weeks at a time and having to actually think about like, do you like your life? And realizing I didn't was this like, oh no. And then kind of working through that, deconstructing it. And I have to thank TikTok so much. Like <laughs> they're not wrong that TikTok's radicalizing people, you know, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> but in the best way for me, where it was like, I really was learning so much from people who are breaking the status quo and doing the things they want to do. And, and, just this opportunity to, I had never been online also. I was not a person who consumed content because I was at work and always at work and kind of seeing how people lived their lives for the first time in my thirties was this huge, oh, I don't have to do it exactly the way that everybody around me is doing it. I think the internet is such a cool tool to see that people do things differently and people say no and people set boundaries and people walk away from things that don't make them happy. Um, and I had always lived in fear. Like I never wanted anybody to see me sweat. I never wanted anybody to see me try too hard. Right. You want to be like, I want to do everything perfect, but I never want anybody to know I'm trying hard and you still want to be quirky and funny, but like never cross the line into weird. Like there's all these very strange expectations I had on myself. Um, and I just, it was, I really did deconstruct each little piece of that. Like asking why has changed my whole life. Like this, like even my mom saying, when I kind of started to bring up like, I don't think this job makes me happy. And she said, Anna, nobody likes their job. Like work is miserable. And I, and I said, why? <laughs> like, can, can we, can we take that back a few steps and say like, why is that? Yeah. I don't think I need to be miserable. That feels weird. feels like a weird choice. Right. And, and then, yeah. And just each step of the way being like, no, I actually, I can rest. I need it. And I can slow down. That's what like my every bone in my body is begging me to slow down and begging me to rest. And I've never listened. Like I've always powered through and always been like, I, I can do it. I can do so much. And it, now when I'm like, I'm tired, I'm going to lay down. And that like <laughs> blows my mind. I never would have done that. So it's just every piece of it saying, why am I doing that? Well, and it must be great to know that when you need it, you have the overdrive gear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> and it is kind of what's say not it's not good always that it does, you know, even with the TED talk, I hadn't written it and I had to give it on Wednesday. And on Tuesday I sat down and I was like, well. It's not the first time <laughs> I've had to pull so my shit together. The Tuesday night before the TED Talk <laughs> on Wednesday. Yeah. You were writing the TED Talk. Yeah. And they have a very hardcore sort of scientific, you know, sort of basis for what they want, right? Yeah, I they read the list. It it's very crazy. I didn't read it until right? the day before, and I was like, oh. 
There's a lot of rules. <laughs> wow. So how do you think you did? I did okay. I have terrible stage fright. Oh. My dogs are wrestling. Um, <laughs> we don't hear them. It's all okay. good. Okay. Uh, I have terrible stage fright, so I don't know how to fix that. Yeah. I just get very nervous and I forget what I'm doing. Wait, but you were on the West Coast doing stand-up comedy, right? Yes. Like I said, I do a lot of things <laughs> that right. I don't feel qualified to do, that I'm doing terrified. And I even think after I did my first set of, I did my first live show in May of 2023. And afterwards, uh, you know, my friend asked, do you want to do this again? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and they said, really? Like you sweat through all your clothes. You were shaking like a leaf. And I was like, yeah, but there's something about it. It's, it's like magic. And I, I want to try everything. I not to say that I feel like I missed out, but I, I really do just want to try everything. I'm super stoked to hear your touring because I think for a stand up comic, it's vitally important to creating a career. And I really, it really makes the internet thing make more sense to me too when I get to meet people in the real world where people can tell you all day in your comments, like, you're changing my life, you're changing my life. And you're like, okay. And then you meet them and they stand in front of you and they cry and they tell you what's going on in their life. And it's like, oh, this is why I'm doing, this is why I'm here. This is what I want to do. That is awesome. Um, There's a kind of spirituality in what you're doing that's non-secular. It's like non-denominational because yeah. the, <laughs> the human spirit comes through what you do and you're just so raw and so present and so real that it opens the door for people to access that for themselves. And we're all stuck in this vice grip of you can't be that because of, quote, society or because right. of this or that. Because concern, of something. Right. But you are the the antithesis to that. You are just open and let's go for it. And <laughs> we, Greg and I are the same way to some degree. And so we really resonate with, with what you're up to. Um, and like next time you're in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, we definitely- Yeah. Oh my gosh. I did a show in San Francisco on my birthday this past year, which was another what? one of those like wild moments where they, like they brought a cake out and you're like, yeah. I'm on a stage in San Francisco, California on my 36th birthday. <laughs> like when is your birthday? March 24th. And what Do you remember the you name of the venue? I was at Cobbs. You were at Cobbs. Damn, yeah. that's- that's a solid location. Yeah, it was lovely. So are you your own agent since you're an event planner? So I am not because oh. I could be. Lately, now that I don't have the day job, I'm like, how do I let everybody know I don't need help anymore? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's good. It's very good for me to learn to let go and say, I'm going to let you find these shows for me. And I'm not going to stress about it. And so I do have an agent who, who books my live shows. Um, but like, as far as everything else goes, I've done all my own brand deals. I've reached out to all my own brands that I wanted to work with and have done all that myself. But, um, but I have a, I have a, I think she's my manager now, but it's really just people. It's a lot of saying yes in the way that like I have been, I got my first live show, just someone messaging me and saying, have you ever considered doing a show? And I said, no <laughs> and uh it's it it just keeps kind of like have you ever considered writing a book no but sure i would i think i could do that and um a woman reached out and she was just like i think what you're doing is so important and she's like i'm a manager for bands but i would really love to like help you just in any way that i can because i know you're probably struggling to stay on the creative side when you're handling all of it. And I said, yeah. And then we got on a call and I was like crying. I was like, why are you helping me? Like, why are you doing this for me? And she said, are you helping people in the world or hurting them? And I was like, helping, I guess. And, and she's just like, and is what you do good or bad? And I said, good, I guess. And she said, I just want to help you. She's like, you're the kind of person who needs the help but we need you. So, and, and so she's just kind of been 
helping me navigate some things and doing some of the little things I really don't want to do. Like, hey, can you can you email them about paying me? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not the boldest yes. in that way. That is one of the hard challenges of the yeah. community. Yeah. It's been a lot of saying yes to people and saying yes, like just putting myself out there in little ways and trusting the universe. Has it- taking care of myself has has changed my life, literally. I started taking care of myself mm, two and a half years ago for the first time ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. I mean, not running my, I, I know that sounds silly based on my last month, but not running myself into the ground in the way that I used to and listening when I'm tired, sleeping, sitting around, like eating. <laughs> that must be really hard for you. Eating meals. Like <laughs> I it's the basics. And I mean that. I never really even gave myself the time to do the basics. And it's so it's so dumb because when I look back, I'm a thousand times more productive now. And I do I'm probably working a half as much time hmm. because I'm can think and I have had water and I am yeah sleeping like it's all this it's so it's the stuff that's so simple and it has to start there and everything just kind of follows are you open to a product idea for you what product keep it up cutie bath bubbles oh yeah i'm working on that (laughs) yeah me we need that it's the me it would be the me soup seasoning that's what i call it when i take a bath i'm making me me soup because nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm in <laughs> I don't yeah. know. it's the perfect energy to me it just bu- it yeah. just bubbled out of my own little brain yeah I, no that's definitely i am what also like <laughs> i'm annoying online because i do have a business background too so i'm like not totally useless but i'm constantly like in brands that i like comments and i'm always like in there like just pushing myself in their direction all the time. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, what a bright, shining example of joy and the possibilities and uh, humans being human for just the reason of being themselves. I love it. Literally, though, I I told someone this the other day. He said, I'm struggling to figure out how to get online. And I said, do you know how easy it is to... It's not easy, but to be exactly who you are and make that your brand. And that's it. It's not hard. People are like, is this an act? And you're like, what? <laughs> like, no, yeah. I, that sounds exhausting. Because <laughs> if it was, everyone would pick up on that and they'd be like, oh, no, not for me. Yeah. And I, I people will meet me and say, oh, you're just you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. And seeing your videos, do you do your own editing? Yeah. So there's a uniqueness to the edit too that mm-hmm. has a bubbly energy. It's Is very that- by design as well. It's it's two it's about two to three second increments for 30 seconds. And I've changed the frame every two to three seconds because I know how my brain works. I also always say this I'm creating content for me. <laughs> like <laughs> Okay, right, what would right, I right. want to see and what do I want to hear and what would hold my attention? And that's like. But you've chaos. given yourself some parameters, it sounds like. So you have mm-hmm. a 30 second video mm-hmm. and every three seconds it's changing frame, you call it. Yeah. And, which and, is location and I, change. Yep. Even if it's not a location, a change of item or a change of what I'm doing or, you know, like how I'm moving. Um, and then that's, that's, that's also branding. It's, it's keeping within my brand, creating my brand, using the same visuals and, and people, and and then it does work because people will meet me in public and say, are you that lady with the vacuum? Or are you that lady with the bathrobe? Or are you, are you the lady who's outside yelling? I'm that lady. Right. Now, what's really interesting is I'm thinking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
but the one where you were breaking down and telling us all like mm -hmm. that, that I don't recall any edits. That was none. Very, mm -mm. That's so interesting. I'll post crying videos because the other thing is, yeah, I'm just who I am. And all that is to me is I'm not in a space to make content. I posted one today. There's no edits also. And it's just an update. Like, here's what I've been doing. I'll be back when I can because that's setting boundaries with my time and my space and not forcing it because you will know if I force it, you will know. Yeah. Or I will know. Like if I watch something and I know I wasn't really feeling it, it's, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's super authentic. Uh, uh, can I ask a more personal question? Sure. When you're all snuggled up in your blankets on the couch and you want to watch that pop culture thing, uh -huh. what are you watching? I'm like, Love is Blind, Bachelor, Bachelorette um all these things you know why because i spent so much of my life worrying about what other people thought about me and trying you know like not to like the color pink and like trying to be like cool and calm and collected and not and not being like a pick me girl and trying to and it's just like no i like taylor swift i think she's fun and i like watching the bachelor it's a mess and i love watching love is blind i'm also just delusional enough to hope everybody stays together forever and <laughs> you know, I, I hadn't really liked the bachelor until the golden bachelor oh my gosh yes and then i got into it my partner and i watched every episode of that golden bachelorette just started oh my goodness and i'm in love with a little old man <laughs> <laughs> I told my husband that was my dream man, and he was like, "Excuse me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, well, yeah, he'll be there in a few years. Give him a couple decades. I'm not <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I, um, I have a hard time with serious television because life is hard enough. Yeah, drama is too much. I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm good. I lived a lot of life. I. I had like a, a lot, I mean, obviously I have a lot of mental health issues and I have been through a lot and I, <laughs> I'm good on that. How has this new life rippled through your family? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, my parents are so proud of me, but they also have to hear a lot about themselves. My live show is heavily about my parents. And, and uh, I was raised in a household with two elite athletes. Um, my parents were in the world championships in triathlon, Ironman in the 80s. And then my whole life has been athletics, their coaches, their all of the above. My mom's also a doctor my dad's an entrepreneur he's owned so many businesses and they're very successful and and being in this household and and feeling the pressure and it being a very hard place to grow up knowing you're silly like <laughs> well that's what i'm thinking of. like yeah. you talk about um different sides of that mental place of success because mm -hmm. you're talking about authenticity and if mm -hmm. i don't want to do a post i'm not doing it where to be a triathlon athlete, mm -hmm. it's like you're working out today whether you like it or not. <clears throat> Every day of their whole lives, I always like the jokes in my show are like, if you go to my parents' house, nobody's ever sat on the furniture. Like, if you every piece of furniture is uncomfortable because no one's ever sat on, like, they don't even know what their couch feels like because wow. they don't have time to sit yeah. on it. And if you like are trying to watch a sports game or something, it takes an hour for someone to figure out how to turn the TV on because they've never turned it on before. And, you know, all of these things, like, these are the people I spent my whole life with. And they are, they are the, they are hustle culture. They, they invented it. It's, right. it's their dream. Like, they don't believe in free time, right? right? And now I'm out here and I'm like, just so you know, if you have free time, you don't have to fill it with anything. That's a real thing. If you find yourself with a minute, you don't have to do anything. Now, are you, you both? have a minute right are you both able to see each other and let each other be who they are yeah and but that's been uh i mean 
Um, I did a lot of emotional labor and a lot of the heavy lifting in that relationship. Um, but all I can ever ask of anybody is to be willing to learn and grow and listen. And they've always been willing to listen and have learned and grown. Um, this year, I mean, they're in their, about to be in their 70s and they have started to have some setbacks. Not, I mean, minor, but, you know, they can't run 50 miles a week anymore. And, they, and there's, you know, little things here and there. And my mom said that she's getting so much better at handling it because of me because of listening to me and because of the way I speak to them and the way that I'm like, you know, you don't have to, you don't. Mm. And my dad will tell me that he's learning how to rest because of his daughter. And he, you know, it's, it's all this, this, it's very lovely. My brother, um, he came to my show uh, last month and I talked to his wife after and she goes, he was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and I said, yeah, he's not ready, you know, but it's okay. <laughs> so when you refer to your show, are you talking about sorry, a, sort of a stereotypical type 10 or type 15 or type 5? My, I, hear? I don't know anything about stand-up. My show is... <laughs> It's an hour, it's an hour, hour 15. It's just me. And I yap for an hour and 15 minutes. And I tell stories and I tell my life story, but like in a, with a very stand up pace. Like it, the timing is very stand up. The, the response and, and <coughs> delivery is very stand up E, but not, I don't have like a set show i mean Did, i do i do it has a definite outline it has a beginning middle and end but it is also like a living changing being so it sounds like more like what whoopi goldberg was doing back on broadway in her 20s like you're you're a solo mm -hmm. show yeah it's just a one woman show it's yeah. just me being myself for an hour and People did you create it, enjoy it. Did you create it from just getting up on stage and yeah, um... it, it has changed a lot in the beginning. It was um very much more like my book, uh, where it wasn't personal at all. It was just like here's all these things I've learned. And mm. um now it's more like here's the things I've learned and here's what I learned it from. Mm. <laughs> and mm. uh and being very personal. But that just took time to be comfortable, like putting my life story out there. Do you have any concerns about putting your life story out in such a personal manner and the individuals that are characters in your story, like your brother? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the good news is my parents have seen my show. And like, and I say that even at the front of the show, if they're not there, they've been to eight of my shows. So they've seen it. A lot. And I say at the front of the show, like, just so you know, like, cause I get, I get nervous. People are going to think I'm a bad person. Like saying that. And I'm like, my parents have heard this. We've talked about it. We've had these conversations. This is just like where we're at. I do talk shit about my grandma though. Um, but she's not around I'm not that worried about her. She's 96. I don't think she's worried about how she fat shamed me my whole life. Oh, wow. she's very old you know yes yeah too late to change otherwise i'd talk to her you know, I, that, I really would that reminds me i just heard um oh darn it it's a woman that lives here in marin who's the famous author mark and she's in aa and she's a she, um, well, first of all, if she's in AA, we shouldn't name her. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, all right, so well, she's very open about it. Like, there's, I know. There's anyway. two A's there, and one of them is anonymous. <laughs> right, right, right. So, that's it. Okay. But I just saw her saying, like, you can tell your story. And if the people in it don't like the part they played, they should have acted differently. Oh, yeah. I mean, it. it is. It's. I do hear that even though from other people in my show where they will kind of reflect and get a little bit sad because 
it reminds them of them. And, you know, I feel bad for that, but it's not generally they're very happy. They're like, oh, you gave me a lot to think about. Like, well, and we can our truth and our openness and our authenticity becomes a catalyst for the transformation of all that stuck energy that mm -hmm. has us stuck in our old way of being. So it's this is, you know, having the talking stick and being able to speak our truth to power. It's such an important role for people. And freedom is what's on the other side of it. More liberation for people to be who they are and to, to yeah. express themselves. And, you know, I'm really sorry I didn't get to tell my grandmother and talk shit about my grandmother while she was alive. <laughs> right. No, I'm right. just kidding. No, <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, it, and I also say that, like, I, it, I'm very, very big on like, you have, you have the information that you have, like, you, you are a product of your environment and mm -hmm. access to information has changed drastically and, and access to, you know, just people and hearing the stories of people outside your neighborhood is is so changed and i mean the jokes that i make are like they you know they had to live through world war ii without memes and they you know they had to raw dog the great depression without the internet and it but but i i mean that like it is very funny but you're also like i have no idea what i would have thought it like my grandma feels that way if, for some reason, and obviously, you know, the way she was raised or the access to the information she had or or however the world around her made her feel. And now she can't see, so she can't she she can't look up how to be a little bit less racist. No, I don't know. Well, and it's entirely <laughs> possible that if you weren't a millennial, if you were like a, a boomer ex, like right on the edge, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have HD, ADHD. Well, because yeah, that's like how my mom doesn't have ADHD. <laughs> oh, I see. And there was a wink for those of you who are listening. <laughs> she winked at us when no, she said it, that. I, so I know. It, it might be a little unfair of me and uh, un, un, unforgiving or whatever to say something like that because it's presumptuous on a certain level because I don't have any of that issues in my life that I know of. But it, it, uh, the, I'm, what I'm getting at is because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, were, you were raised in this intense information era, your brain oh, had to adapt. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD until I was 34. I mean, the, the signs were there. I, <laughs> I, I had a feeling. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't, it really wasn't until because objects in motion stay in motion. And I was an object in motion for my entire life until the pandemic. And when I hit that wall in my whole life, just sort of fell apart. It, it changed everything in a way where I couldn't, I tried really hard to force my brain, like, come on, we got it. And it was like, no, no, we're done. Like, <laughs> we're so done. <laughs> we got off the That's track for a second brilliant. and you're not putting us back on it. Yeah. And I was so yeah. frustrated because that is really frustrating it, when you go from, if you, if you never stop. Drive, 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 drive right, right. It, and right. it was this like huge, very hard when I went back to work and, and my coworkers would be like, why can't you do this anymore? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I cannot get my things back in order the way they were. And it was just kind of like my body made me, my body and my brain just were like, hey, we got to deal with this now, unfortunately. Like you can suppress us so hard as long as you want. But at some point, everything came crashing down and it was like, oh, no. <laughs> But you, part of you died, but a new part of you was born. Totally, yes. Yeah. I just had to learn a new way. And and I think I probably learned the more correct way versus killing myself to just make sure it happened. And now being like, well, I'm going to have to do it this way because this is the this only way I, I can. Yeah. I yeah. think our joy is a great 
compass for how we're doing. Mm -hmm. And you even just said you're so much joyful about being alive now. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you didn't even consider it before. I didn't think much about it at all. And it was that same when that pandemic hit and I was looking at my mom and I said, I just really don't want to be here. Like I've never wanted to be anywhere less than my life. And, um, it just, yeah, you're like, I, I'm unfortunately going to have to face all of this right now because it's all happening at once. Wow. And the conversation came to a screeching halt. <laughs> oh yeah, I forget. People get like people get weird when you talk about you know. Well, it's not that we got weird. Things. It was just there was a moment there where yeah. it was a natural thing to do is just be in the recognition of that for mm-hmm. a moment and let it land. And then I, yeah, I had to. Otherwise, yeah, I wasn't. And in some happen. ways, we all got invited into that during the this thing. We yeah. all got invited into creating a new way of being. Yeah. No matter what, your life probably changed around <laughs> March to August of 2020. Yeah, I don't make fun of people wearing a mask now. Well, yeah, no. I I, I wore a mask on a... I got COVID in Europe and had to come home. And I was like triple oh, masking. God. Like, oh, God, oh, God, nobody talked to me. Like, I couldn't, like... And people were giving me like side eyes and rolling their eyes at me, and all. And you don't want to be like, by the way, like I have COVID. <laughs> and you're just like, come here, I want to tell you a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Make fun of me all you want, but um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Well, what do you mind my asking? Where do you? What part of the country are you? Michigan. Michigan. Mm-hmm. So. Um, like here in Marin, I think we have a, um, you know, it's like, you're not ostracized for wearing a mask in my experience. There's a couple, but overall in Michigan, is it overall? Like if you see someone in a mask, you're like, yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, no. I think everybody would be really mean to you. Okay. Michigan is a blue state and like, but only because we have big cities, not like where I live. It's. I live in the middle of nowhere, as you can tell. It's hostile. <laughs> <laughs> it's where people don't want to be told what to do, Jack. Yeah, 100%. And you're like, okay. <laughs> I have no issue with that. Like, I think that's a reasonable stance. Don't right. tell me what to do. Let's just stay off my lawn. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, cool but then you can't worry about other people. If you but I'll say to them, like, look, don't. Right. Exactly. Point your finger at me. Yeah. When I'm wearing a clown nose and a mask and a a a, a you know. Yeah. Don't worry fun. about me either. It has to go both ways. Yeah. You you know like during the pandemic to say I had a mental health crisis is like such an understatement. I had shaved my head and like only had the middle strip left, so like a mohawk but full length. And so, but I dyed it hot pink, yeah. and. I remember this. What kind of music were you listening? <laughs> Taylor Swift. And I remember going like to the store and one day and I didn't have a mask. And I was like, oh no, I don't want anybody to think that like I I'm just gonna like run in fast. I forgot it. Like I don't want any and then I was like, Anna, they're gonna know. They're gonna know who you are. <laughs> right, they'll remember. What with the happy care? <laughs> Wow. I love that. I wish I got, I wish there were some photos or something. Maybe, maybe you could put a photo on Instagram for your fans. I got a, I like it. It was so short lived because, because I still, it's so hard to like not care about what other people think, you know, when you yeah, go out and about and be like, oh God. <laughs> so how did this, how your, your husband, like he, that's amazing. You had a mental breakdown. Mm-hmm. Your husband was right there with you. He was the one. I looked at him in the eye and I said, I really don't want to be here. Like, I don't want to be in my life. And he said, do you think it's time to call somebody? And I said, yeah. Um, Because when we met, so we met when I was in my early 20s, 23, 22 or 23. And I, when I was 19, I was in inpatient treatment for anorexia. 
from like a lifetime of, I mean, not a shock with my parents was the whole thing. Uh, and so when I met him, I was still pretty like trying to figure out what to do. And I was still pretty heavy in therapy then. And, but then like kind of you get married and you buy a house and you start working 50, 60 hours a week and you just sort of stop taking care of yourself. Um, but it was always there. So like when it happened again, he was like, Hey, Hey, mm. <laughs> do you want to <laughs> not lose your mind? <laughs> yeah. He's so, a very well-rounded individual. I don't know so what that's you, like. Right. So <laughs> during this pandemic, you had a breakdown and then you sought help to mm -hmm. help heal yourself, mm -hmm. to help you heal yourself. Mm -hmm. That's really good to hear. Yeah. That and that was also like kind of what got me back posting online too, was like, I was sort of relearning how to take care of myself. And it was like realizing that I didn't have any passion or dream or anything that I had chosen on my own. So like on top of it, just being this crazy time it was also an existential crisis of like, Oh no, <laughs> who am I? Yeah. What do I want? I never stopped to think about it. I do you think you know with someone who is going through that, there's a question that has helped you in your healing process that they could ask themselves. Oh, I, it's really different for everybody. I think like, I'm really lucky that I had a background where I had the skills and I had gone to therapy previously and I had had a psychiatrist previously and I had these tools, whether or not I was thinking about them, where, you know, I just, the question for me, if I need help is I don't want to be here. That's it. For me, that's like the, this is where it ends and you get help because there's no reason to feel that way. Like there's a million things you can do. And now I'm like, so adamant. Like my people say like, what's your daily mantra? And I say, all you have to be is here. And that's it. Like all you have to be is here. All you have to be is here when everything feels really heavy and you're like, I can't get it all done. And I can't do that. It's like, yeah. Okay. Don't then. All you have to be is here. That's awesome. And, yeah. um, but that's kind of that moment for me is always like, Oh, that's bad. Especially when I can very visibly look like, look at my entire life and say, nothing is wrong. Mm. The bills are paid, the whatever. And you're just like, nothing is wrong. And I would rather not be a part of it. And it's like, that's not good. Right. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm also like a silly goose, which is not great because I can't take anything seriously. Even when uh, it's that serious, wonderful. I'm like, eh. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> that's when you're like, right. hey, husband, I think I might jump off a bridge. I'm not going to. I'm just telling you it's, it's definitely on my mind. <laughs> uh, I might get some milk, too. Uh, okay. You should know I'm not doing my best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's bad. <laughs> Uh, but then, I mean, just not being afraid to get help. It's like, what's the worst? Like, it can't get worse. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my yeah. headspace couldn't get worse than that. Right, right, like, that's right, about right. as bad as the headspace right. gets. Right. And saying, hi, something is not right, and I don't want to feel that way anymore. Can you help me? Yeah. I want to feel excited about whatever and so for everyone that's hearing this i just want to take a minute and encourage you to go follow anna on social media that'll fix all your issues <laughs> it won't it, it does help <laughs> but, don't say the thing about my content is that i break it down really digestible for you and people will say my therapist has been trying to get a point across to me the point you just got across to me in one video for the last year. And you're like, yes. Because the other thing about me is that I am a writer. 
So I can take a really big concept and it takes a little time, but I can break it down really tiny and really easy and put it in a little ism for you to become a little brain worm. And then you have it to hold and take on your way. And I, I feel very weird to say that I'm very proud of myself for being able to do that. But it's been a long journey. I, somebody asked me last year on a podcast, like, do you know how cool what you do is? And I, like, had a complete meltdown because I didn't. And then I had to kind of go on this little journey, like, what am I doing? Is it cool? Like, and then I broke down on stage one night and everyone's like, what's going on? And I was like, oh, my God, I just realized I'm proud of myself. Wow. And it was like, damn, I know. There's a lot going on this past few years. <laughs> well, and there's a lot more going on. And um, we should let people know that if you want to get some of this energy in person, mm -hmm. she will be appearing at the Den in Chicago yes. on December 1st. I will. And then on December 22nd, she's appearing at a mystery spot in Ann Arbor. Yes. Weekend. <laughs> it is as yet to be released yes. to the public. It's so. It's Go a get. pub. It's called uh it's called Connor O'Neill's and my friends own it, but they have a, an event space and she asked if I would do a Christmas show and I was like, oh, "You really God. want me to do a Christmas <laughs> show?" And so I'm going to it's going to be really fun. If you wear a Grinch sweater, you get in free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, you have to pay me. I'm very poor. <laughs> got it. Got it. Those are the oh. new rules. Unfortunately, I can't do any. Yeah, these are the new rules. I yes, can't I, do freebies anymore. No freebies. <laughs> yeah. Well, and let me say that you are a diamond and worth every red cent. Uh, to be, <laughs> or to blue be cent. <laughs> right. However you, whatever weird, famous, old. Whatever color your cents are. <laughs> right. All six of them. Um. Anyway. We've been stoked to have you. We're winding our conversation yeah. down now. We will definitely put all the links in the the, the various ways that we communicate through this yes. crazy show of ours. Yes. And join my Patreon. That's a big one. Because that's yes. the big thing. The morning show is going to be great. I have 11 days to come up with a concept. So, Got it. So <laughs> on day 10, she'll be creating some amazing stuff. For the last I'm going to have to record three weeks of shows in one day, and I can do it. Yes. We know that. Anybody <laughs> can. You can do it. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that brings us to our final question of the Moped Outlaws show. And uh, there's no wrong answer, but it also is something that's near and dear to our heart. So we hope for sincerity, which we don't even have to worry about. Which sincerity is <laughs> definitely the the, the root my default. Word. My yeah. default is. <laughs> so here it is. Drum roll. Eminem or Foo Fighters? Oh, that's hard. It wouldn't be hard, but I'm from Detroit, so it You're becomes right. hard. Right. I say Eminem. We grew up on the same street. Wow, really? Well, eight mile across is the entire state, so it's not actually that cool. <laughs> and the street is uh, hundreds of miles long. <laughs> okay. But well, but the same one. Wow, awesome! So, have you ever thought about doing any kind of uh, you know lyrical spitting or any kind of battle rapping or anything? Oh, I'm I'm always singing in my content. I sing so Good. many songs. Has anybody done like a mashup with you and put a, a beat behind you? Uh, no. And I really want them to. <laughs> Someone has written a song like with my words, but it was like nice. But I, I need someone to put me on on tracks. Got I would it. love that. Well, there you go, folks. The invitation. The gauntlet has been <laughs> laid down. Uh, Anna Prisbliski. It's been amazing to sit with you. We hope to hear from you soon again. Let us know when you're coming to our town. Yes. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for taking care of yourself. Because oh, my gosh. That's all I you. can ask of anybody is to take care of themselves. That's my, that's my call to action. Right. And we're grateful to you for doing it for yourself. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. This was my favorite. <laughs> we get that a lot. I know that's not cool to say, but hey, I said it. Recording stopped.